Praise the Lord. Whom all you are ready. I'll give you an opportunity again to answer. Who among you are ready? You know, I concur with what uh, Brother Joey said about victory. At least two of you are excited. <laughs> Some of you. Nobody's praying for failure, right? Because you're in the wrong church. Open heaven. That's what I'm hearing at this moment. Open heaven. It's better than open earth. Right? The last time when we heard about open earth, people were swallowed and that was not good. But there's something about open heaven. Meaning for those of you who are, who have ears to hear and heart to believe, there is access for you. Amen? Why don't you rise with me as we read the word? Let's uh, honor. Do you know there's reason why we're doing the things that we're doing in church? When we rise up, it's not honoring me. It's not honoring whoever here. But we're understanding that the word of God is going to be released. And we're just standing by to receive. We're going to start with uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Somebody say, mighty. Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Father, this is our prayer that the things that you are declaring here, we don't get too familiar with it unto dullness, but familiar unto intimacy. We want to get to a point that we are familiar with who you are, that we bear much fruit. I pray that for each and every person here, every family here, every married couple here, every group that comes in, I pray that we may not have a comprehension of all the things that you want to reveal, but I pray that this very morning, we may apprehend, we may grasp, we may catch, because this is what will bring us to a higher level. We will experience the victory that is made available. We will advance. We will take ground. We will break ground. This is our determination. More than anything, I pray once more that we get a glimpse, another angle, another perspective of your lovely and wondrous person. This is what we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Don't sit right away. Turn to somebody and say, you are wonderfully made. Turn to somebody and say, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't finish the statement in fearfully. Go ahead. You may sit down. Thank you for indulging me standing up. Um, for those of you, wow, there's a free phone right here okay I claim that and gee, somebody might have forgotten somebody pretend to not be seen and there you go um, we started uh, bringing back you know because I know we've gotten used to this is just an aside it's not yet part of the preaching um, we started uh, during the pandemic we were kind of, you know, very cautious, um, not having a lot of contact, but it seemed good to just um, receive your giving again, passing baskets. But if you are uncomfortable with that, it's still all right to, to give through um, contactless uh, ways. You can still give uh, 
via QR code or anything like that. But what is important, this is what's important, because sometimes we can miss it. We just give without thought or give without intention or what I fear is giving without faith. We just simply drop something. But those who are of the kingdom, we don't do anything without faith, right? So the more important practice, whether you do it via your phones or you put it on an envelope and you drop it in the box outside or here as we pass it, what's important is you're releasing faith. That's why we pray for your giving. This is who we are. This is what we do, right? Because without faith, what does the Bible say? It is impossible. Thank you, Christians, for answering. <laughs> it is impossible to please God. And if you continue that, if you continue that, uh, th that verse, because God is a rewarder. I don't know about you. It's in the, it's in the scripture. I won't, um, I won't hesitate to receive from God what he wants to give. If you don't want to receive it, maybe the person beside you would like to receive your share. <clears throat> right? Um, over the past few weeks, of course, we've been talking about freedom. Last week, mind your freedom. If you want to put a title to this message here, it seemed good to go towards this direction. Mind your battlefield. Mind your battleground, right? Your mind is your battleground. And uh, this year has been released, at least in our local community right here in the fort, that this year is a year of breaking ground. Breaking ground. And some, one of the points that we actually released and, and said is... If you want to break ground this year, it will not happen without you being ready for some battles. It's highly likely that maybe even this year, we're, uh, what, six months, halfway through the year, right? More than six months. It's very likely, it's, it can happen that maybe in your lifetime thus far, you will experience your greatest, greatest battle this year. But it does not mean that that's your greatest victory. Your greatest victory is always ahead of you. No matter how great your victory was in the past, there's something always is greater and better. And that is the very essence of hoping. There's always something better. Somebody say, tomorrow is better. But now faith. Now faith. Right? Some, um, there's a verse in 1 John that says that faith is what overcomes. It is the victory that you have. Anybody interested in the idea or the manifestation of victory in your life? We want that, right? We want that. Well, then we better step out in faith. Okay? So whether you're here in this room or... In, in, uh, in your own homes, in your own rooms online, something needs to be stirred. Our endeavor, every Sunday, every time we gather, whether it's a Sunday, a, a weekday, or any time of the week, our endeavor, our heart, as part of this church, is to stir your faith. We want to stir your faith, to encourage your faith, that you may stand, uh, be willing to take a stand, be willing to uh, take a step towards the things of God, and to also lift your hopes up, right? The world may be saying, oh, don't get their hopes up. Well, we're doing exactly the opposite here. We want your hopes up, but we want it anchored to that which is steady, to that which is unshakable, which is the kingdom of God. And at all times, we want we want you to sense, to feel the love of God, to demonstrate, to manifest in, in, uh, that, in, a, in the grace and the capacity that God has given us. We're not saying we're perfect, but those three, we anchor what we do. The faith, the hope, and the love, which the Bible says, these things 
will not pass away. So I think we're, we're going towards the ra- right direction, right? Who among you are glad you are in church? Um, unless you're living under a rock these days, uh, we know that there is a war somewhere, right? War, somewhere. And uh, although this is uh, somewhere above Europe, Russia, U- Ukraine, um, apparently it's about 9,000 kilometers away, far away. Can you hear the guns and the booms and the whatever? You can't, right? But can we feel its effect? We can feel its effect. In fact, we have nothing to do with what's going on there. But somehow, one way or another, we're feeling the effect. Two sovereign nations engaged and decided that they will do something about their differences. And lo and behold, the effect of it is not limited in their immediate vicinity. So it is possible that some people can make decisions, some groups can make decisions you have nothing to do with, but you feel it. And that's a war that's going on. That is a war that you can actually determine the location of. And we're far from that. But there is another war that you may not be aware of. In fact, the greatest deception of the enemy is to make people think Maybe even Christians think that it's not real, it is not happening, but that is the war that is going on in our minds. This is a more ancient war. It is more perhaps a real war in a sense of spiritual things. It may not be felt immediately, but certainly we will feel the effect of it in our lives And in the lives of the people around us and maybe even beyond us. That's why I want us to kind of reacquaint ourselves and understand what we have. Not merely to counter what the enemy is doing. We don't live our lives. We don't wake up in the morning thinking what or how we can counter the enemy. Because the enemy is not such a big deal. If you wake up every day and you're fearful of what the enemy is is going to do, then maybe we need to refocus because God is not focused on the enemy. He's got his mind. The Bible says he is mindful of you. He's thinking about you. And the Bible says that his thoughts for you are not to, but to give you hope in a future. To prosper you. To give you peace. Turn to somebody say, Shalom, Shalom. That's his thought. Is to give you prosperity and peace. Wealth and wholeness. These are things that we want. And I pray that we're not dreaming of it. Just maybe one day, maybe someday, maybe when we get to heaven. The whole point of Jesus coming on earth is so that we can experience heaven here. Uh, this past week, we the youth, tinitig na ako kung magigilty yung feeling ko wala naman, because there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. We uh, there's a um, in the main there's a conference called Life Con. And the theme of the conference is just like heaven, right? Um, This past week, they they had that, and they had the young young people. We had a wonderful time. And uh, for me, naman, that's an everyday occurrence because every time I see Pastor Mitch, it's just like heaven. (laughs) Feels like heaven. Let's end the service on that good note. So, it's highly likely that this is not your first time to hear about battle in your mind. Renewing your mind, what goes on. Who among you on a daily basis think about something? Okay, maybe I'm asking the wrong question. Who among you, there are times 
or there are days that your mind is offline. <laughs> totally nothing, nothing. I know there are moments, at least for men, <laughs> that when our wives ask us, what are you thinking about? We can honestly say, nothing. <laughs> and it's a peaceful place. We may be staring somewhere, and we may have this very thoughtful face, but it's nothing. It's a great place to be. But we can't live there. We can't put up a permanent residence there. Right? So, our mind needs to be engaged. Right? We said last week that if your mind uh, does not matter to the things of God, then it's not worth renewing. Why would the scripture encourage us to renew your mind? In fact, we ask you that when you come in here, don't leave your brains out. It's going to be messy, number one. Don't leave your mind out there. We want you engaged. We mean that to some people. We really mean that. We really want you engaged. Sana dumating na siya. But let's review, let's look at some of the things that we can pick up for, for today. We read the scripture in the New King James. Let's probably read it in some other translations. It says here in the voice, For though we walk in the world, who among you are in the world? Yes, some of you are already made you off somewhere. We are in the world. The Bible says, Jesus said himself that we are in the world, but we are we are not of the world. Difference there. We do not fight according to this world's rules of warfare. Newsflash. Whether you want it or not, you are in the middle of a war. Verse 4. The weapons of the war we are fighting are not of this world, but they are powered by God. So you are actually equipped. You have been given tools. You have weapons. But if you don't know that they exist or they're real or if you have no idea how to use them, what's available for you, you can have the best weapon in the world, but it will render you useless. There's a movie called Edge of Tomorrow. Who among you have seen that? Great movie. Uh... He died many times. That's the point of the movie. He died many times. But anyway, uh, the first scene there, spoiler alert, if you, uh, you haven't seen the movie, too bad. I'll say it anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, the first part, the hero um, is thrown into a battle. But he's, not, he's a soldier, but he's not a soldier that fights in the field. He actually operates around, right? He's more of a tactical type or PR type, right? He faces the people and gives them news about what's going on with the army and all of that. But he was put in whatever situation, somehow he got into the front lines and he was given weaponry that's effective, but it has, he has no idea how to operate the thing. Do you know what you have? The Bible says we have been given something that is mighty in God. If you only know what you have, you won't be afraid of the enemy. And it says here, it is powered by God and effective. We mentioned before, that when we stand here, anybody who stands here, all our job is to remind you of what you have. To remind you of who you are and who you have. That's it. In fact, the truth of the matter is, you already have what it takes to win. Today, right now. Regardless how you feel, you may feel like the biggest loser. But the truth is, if you are in Christ... There is great potential for you to experience individual conquest. And since we're many here, I heard somebody say, you know, in, in any meeting this big, 
where there's a gathering of people, when the word of God and the promise of God is being released, there is always a multiplied opportunity for individual conquest. Ang ganda, pakinggan, di ba? Do you know what it means? I didn't understand it the first time because it's like a, it's so beautiful to actually understand. It simply means that you and you and you and you and you and you, all of us here, we have the opportunity to actually experience on a practical matter God's demonstrated victory over your situation. Your situation is different from that person's situation. But you hearing the same word, you can receive instruction that will bring you to the victory that you've been attaining, that you've been wanting to have. It's available right here. Even given through an imperfect vessel. Right? I'm excited about that. Excited about the victory, the possibility of victory. Somebody said earlier, the surety of victory. What would, what would it be like when the first thing, first thing you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about, today, I'm victorious. No more secrets. Victorious? Never mind. Iba pala yun. Um, mamaya tatawa kayo paglabas nyo, baka magets nyo. <laughs> it is effective in tearing down strongholds erected against the truth. Watch that bit. It says, it is erected, it, tearing down the strongholds erected against the truth. Do you remember last week? Yes? His truth. I heard the Holy Spirit speak. Very strongly right now. Remember last week we were mentioning that it is the truth that sets us free. And there is this stronghold that tries to come against his truth. Anything that is even slightly watered down is less than truth. His truth is specific. It is absolute. But the world, the, the world we live in right now tries to tell you, well, you have your truth and you have this truth and you have my truth. It's all relative. I know about your truth, but I don't want to be related to your truth. It doesn't have any semblance with what I know or who I know. Strongholds. That's an interesting world, word. Because uh, maybe in more ancient times, it's a little bit more, it's a lot easier to understand what strongholds are. Because the strongholds of today are not actually above ground, they're underground. <laughs> right? We don't know. They're there. But it's actually a stronghold. But before, they would actually put up huge fortresses. Strongholds. Brother Joey mentioned uh, Jericho. Who among you remember Jericho? Right? The walled city. Okay? And that's the first place where God brings His people to win over. And we are... Who did God ask? God asked uh, former slaves, no training. Right? It didn't even... You know, if you're more of a tactical, strategic person, you want to ease your fighter. You don't go, if you're Manny Pacquiao, right, his first fight, you won't go against Mike Tyson in his prime. Different weight division, right? But God decides, Kayan, go ahead. But there's this huge wall. There's this fortress. There's a stronghold. What happens? Well, they get an instruction to walk around for several days in silence. And then on the last day, shout. How do you get victory? Do you remember how the wall fell down? The wall fell down, right? Regardless how, how big. 
did they use any tool at all. There was no tool used. There was no ladders. Nothing was used. Sometimes we're trying to figure out, how am I going to solve this problem? It's not about your tools. It's about his instruction. I don't know what wall you're facing. I don't know how many years you've been trying to figure out, do I go over it? Do, go, do I go under it? What am I going to do? Maybe if we follow just maybe that process of silence and then speak. The time of silence is longer than the time of speaking. Why is that? Maybe time for silence is actually time for hearing. Right? But oftentimes, like we humans, we, we tend, when, when a problem comes up, the first thing that comes out is complaint, murmuring, and the Lord. Right? One thing I remembered is that when they shouted, the walls fell down. You know why? Because your victory is voice activated. Your victory is voice activated. When was the last time that you actually spoke something? When was the last time you spoke to your situation? Right? You spoke to your situation. It's a good thing. Your victory is voice activated. Who among you wants to speak? But your voice cannot just be spitting out whatever comes out. It has to be specific. You can't just say whatever. Right? Because your voice needs to resonate with what heaven already declared. You can't speak different from what heaven is already speaking. When we say heaven, we're talking about the things of God, the will of God. Let your will be done as it is. So we are attentive to the things that's going on there instead of staring at the wall that's impenetrable. So that when we see and we hear, like just, just like what Jesus said, I don't do anything and I don't say anything. I don't even decide anything until I see my Father do it, say it, speak it, decide it. So that I just resonate. I just echo resonance. Do you know that uh, there are some, I don't know if they use it now, but the, the dog whistle, right? We don't hear it, but they, unless you hear it, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you didn't evolve properly or you're more advanced if you're a mutant, right? Um, we don't hear it, but they, but they do. There's, some, there's different frequency that, that, that the whistle is making that is not audible to humans, Right? Well, guess what? There is a resonance in heaven that you are designed for, but if we're not attuned to it, we're not going to resonate it. Hello? Okay. Oh, yeah. no, Do you want... hear that resonance? <laughs> no, I just want to add something to what you said. Um, he had said that our victory is voice activated, right? So that also means our defeat is voice activated. Come on. Who's voice? I'm just saying. Because he's talking about complaining, right? So if we're complaining, then we're operating Come in a on. spirit of defeat. Because we already have the victory, but we're not seeing it. Um, but he also said this, you're going to speak to your problem or your situation. You're not having a conversation with it. Do you understand what that means? Yes. You're not giving it an opportunity to speak back to you. Because when you speak, you speak with authority into that situation based on what you've heard from heaven. Come on. Not based on what you're feeling in the moment because our feelings can lie. Yes. Our feelings can tell us otherwise. Yep. So that resonance is, and he said echo earlier, then you're repeating what heaven has said. You're not repeating what you're feeling. Yes. Now, does that mean that your feelings aren't valid? No, you feel things and God gave us feelings. But we're not feelings. We have them, but we're not to be dictated by them. So when we speak to our problems, we're simply saying this. 
Listen to what heaven has already said. Come on. Woo. Listen to the victory that I'm operating from. And then you don't give it a chance to speak back. It's going to try, and it may yell at you, but you go, shh. Be still. Have, I mean, have you ever had a conversation? Well, this is really more with children. They're complaining, come in, you go, shh, and they go, and then they try to say, and you go, shh. Wait, that's what you do to me. That's true. I do. But I can relate. So you don't give it a chance to talk back. Speak and speak in line with what God has already said. Come on. But just don't speak in line with what he's already said. Because he's always speaking to you. So that means he has something fresh to say. Right. Come on. So while we can declare the victory that has already been won for us, there are victories and things that we need to be walking out and hearing fresh. Because when we hear it fresh and we speak it fresh, there's far more power behind that than what we may have been used to in the past. So that's just to encourage you. While our victories are voice activated, your defeats are as well. So mind your mouth. Oh, maybe I'll talk about that next week. Yun. Right? So maybe. Maybe. Sana next week na. Because <laughs> we know, we, we can all relate that our feel, feelings can speak really, really loud. But it's good to remember what the psalmist said. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. Psalmist ba Let's read what David did because, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Mitch was speaking about fresh word. And David, at this point in his life, has won many victories. Of course, the most famous victory is his individual conquest against the giant, right? But his individual conquest was merely a setup for him leading individuals to their conquests. Right? Because later on, you hear stories of his mighty men and their, um, their victories of individual fights. But they were mightier together. The collective is so much better than the individual. But the individual story Victory lend, it, lend itself in training for when the group, the collective, the community. There is something that can happen through us because all of us together, we make a difference. You, you as an individual, you may not be called to change the world. We've said this before. But certainly you are called to change your world. But if we all stand together like that, there's a bigger world that we're changing together than alone. Right? So here we see David, after a long time, he gets crowned as king. And then the Philistines, his enemy, again and again, the Philistines, let's read in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. To 20. We'll see if we get to 20. When the Philistines heard that David had been designated king over Israel, when they heard, right, they all went up to search for David. This is not to celebrate his kingship. This is to put him down. What did David do? When David heard about it, he went down to the fortress. Translation, David also has a stronghold. Fortress is a stronghold. This place used to be the fort, Fort Bonifacio. Right? So we can clearly see that David went to the fort. So he went to hear, to inquire. And he said, it's the, Bible, the Bible says here, verse 19, So David asked the Lord, 
Should I match up against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? Pause. The first victory of David was against Goliath and the nation of the Philistines. So this is not a new enemy. Right? This is not a new enemy, but he needs fresh word for this old enemy. It is not the word that you've heard before, but the fresh word that gives you victory. This is why David's title is a man after God's own heart. Because he's always searching for what are you going to say next. In fact, I urge you to read the next one. Because he faces the same group of people right after he wins against them. Just right after. They go back. The Philistines, they really like the taste of defeat from one person. But what did David do? Again, he asks the same question. What now? He didn't rely on the word that was just given a few minutes ago, a few days ago. Unlike me, sometimes in the fridge, I see food. I don't ask, when was this? Titignan ko lang niya, parang okay pa yan. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not. I just go, I guess we'll find out. But what God wants, your victory is dependent on His, on his fresh word. The words of God reveal the, the thoughts of God. The words of God reveal the thoughts of God. You want to know what He's thinking, He reveals it. You will not know God's thought unless He speaks it. Some people have the written word of God. Who among you have the written word of God? Who among us are hungry enough to actually go to the Word of God on a daily basis? Don't raise your hand. Why? You know why? Sometimes we go, Lord, what are you doing? Well, how can I do this? The Word is so near. But the proximity of the Word, unless it becomes intimate, it will not bear fruit. May secret ako sa We have three kids. It did not happen just because one day I was seated beside Pastor Mitch. Bahala na kayo mag-isip kung paano yun. So I can have the Word of God so near me on a daily basis and still not experience victory. What is happening? There has to be not just a resonance with what we're saying, because what we're saying reveals what we're thinking. And if what we're thinking is not aligned to his thinking, then how can we echo or resonate with what he wants to say? Um, there's one person, in fact, uh, when we, the youth, yesterday... I just attended the last service, and uh, uh, Pastor Stephen went back to an old story that we may be very familiar with about Jesus asking, who do you say that I am? Who do people say that I am? Because you probably heard a lot of people say who Jesus is. But the question will be redirected to you. Who do you say that I am? And, of course, Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus applauded. Galing. But it may not be applauding Peter because it is not man. This is not from man. It is the Father who revealed it to you. Remember the story? Matthew chapter 16. Jesus said the reason why Peter was able to resonate or echo or speak exactly who Jesus is, because he heard it from the Father. Who's the great revealer? The Father revealed. There's a, the Holy Spirit is in there, but we're not going to unpack that right now. Right? But the Father. And then, something happened later on. Jesus 
Peter said something to Jesus, that Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. I thought his name was Peter. Right? Get thee behind me, Satan. Let's, let's, let's look at that because many of us can experience victory at one point and then suddenly we're correcting God. Who among you before have rebuked God? Lord, show me your plan. Another plan, Lord. I don't like that one. Do I have options? Let's look at that. So, Jesus declared in this wonderful scripture, first time, first time. You know, the law of the first in the Bible is very, very crucial. First time, Jesus declares, I am building my church. Praise the Lord, we can declare that the one who's building this church is Jesus himself. He's our foundation. And then, of course, that's great. And then the Bible says, Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. I'm going to read in the Passion Translation. It says, from then on, Jesus began to clearly reveal. So this is something he's never said before. But from the point somebody recognized that Jesus was Messiah from his own team, when that was revealed by the Father... To somebody in his own team, then Jesus felt comfortable enough to give them the next step, to reveal what's going to happen next, right? D Jesus revealed to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer injustice from the elders, leading priests, and religious scholars. He also explained, didn't just mention, but explained that he would be killed and three days later, be raised to life again. Have you ever had a discussion with somebody and a word triggered you and you stopped hearing? Because you were just so triggered by that thought and your thoughts started to imagine different things. Their mouth was still opening, but you are not hearing. This experience is not between Pastor Mitch and I. It doesn't happen to us. We, especially me, I listen so well. And everybody said, Amen. So it happens, right? And I could imagine Peter doing that because Jesus mentioned, I'm going to get killed. And he didn't hear, but in three days, I will be raised. Because suddenly he started planning all these things and started convulse I don't know it's just my imagination right <laughs> that's, that's just me um, but the, and and right away what what happens it says here Peter took him aside boss guys excuse us took aside Jesus and then corrected him privately when was the last time you corrected God <laughs> Lord not that one and he reprimanded Jesus over and over the moment we correct God, we think of ourselves higher than God. That's when, even this is even when it looks like humility. When God says, I want you healed. Hindi, Lord. <laughs> even when, it, when God says, I want you prosperous. Hindi, Lord. <laughs> right? He reprimanded Jesus over and over, saying to him, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. Master, spare yourself. You must never let this happen to you. What did Jesus say after that? Matthew 16, verse 23. Remember, he just heard from God. Such a great thing. Wow, I hear from God. But what's the next thing? He also hears from the devil. I'm not trying to invent something. It's right there. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. I, wanted, I want to see how Peter reacted. I just really want to see. Get away from me, Satan. You are dangerous trap to me. 
you are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Suddenly, two thoughts, two plans started to war against one another. Because the other one did not sit well humanly to Peter. This is a war that's happening. And then Jesus was just very clear. You are merely thinking from a human point of view. What is that human? And, and it looks like it's wisdom. Lord, I don't think that's a great plan. If you're going to be king of Israel, if we're going to set up, you know, um, and, and throw out the Romans, that doesn't look like a good plan. Here, let me show you another path. It sounds great. But it may not be from God. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to distinguish and discern sometimes merely good suggestions but not good God instructions. James chapter 3 verse 15, it says here, For that has nothing to do with God's heavenly wisdom, but can best be described, best description, is the wisdom that is of this world, but both selfish and devilish. Devilish thought, devilish wisdom, right? In fact, let's read that same instruction, James chapter 3, verse 15, in the voice translation. It says here, The wisdom of this world should never be mistaken for heavenly wisdom. It originates below in the earthly realms with the demons. Who among you will be excited when you hear seemingly good suggestions and turn to that person and say, get thee behind me. <laughs> this is not God's wisdom, but earthly, it is demonic. Don't do that. <laughs> but it's just saying clearly, there's a link now from what Peter just heard the latter part and what the scripture is saying now. So there are two thoughts that's warring. You know what, 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 we, what we tend to do sometimes? And that's why we need the scripture, we need the Holy Spirit, we need guidance from our leaders. Don't just do battle on your own. Because you are not alone. I am here with you. <laughs> that's a different psalm. Right? So here, there's reasoning. Um, I'm not going to go to the scripture right now. But when, when Jesus said, let's go to the other side one time. And they didn't have enough bread. And Jesus said, you know, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Herod. And then when they heard that, they thought Jesus was reprimanding them or correcting them because they didn't have enough bread. And Jesus said, don't you still get it? I was with you and you were with me when bread was multiplied. That's not the issue. Because Jesus noticed, the Bible says, that they started to reason amongst themselves. They started to argue amongst themselves. They started to bring, after even seeing and being a part of, participant of that great miracle... They're still susceptible to human wisdom that wars against God's ways. Reasoning. And reasoning is, we can put it this way, it is a, a, a process of thinking, a progression of thought that leads you to a particular conclusion. That is reasoning. You're reasoning, you are thinking, and it brings you to go, I therefore conclude. This is, not, this is now my, my decision or my conclusion. That is reasoning. And they were reasoning amongst themselves. And Jesus was there. The Bible says, do you, Jesus said, do you, still, do you still have no faith? Do you still do not understand? Are your hearts still hardened? Those are very... Very tough questions. So there is that possibility 
that we can reason and that the thinking of God is warring against some of the wisdom that we have. So what do we need to do? The Bible says that we cast down imagination. Do you know that our imagination most of the time is worse than reality? Especially when something bad happens, you're thinking about your child, about your spouse, about somebody, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Our imagination is worse. And the Bible is saying, cast that down. Cast that imagination down. We're not going to have time to unpack the rest, maybe next week. But the cure for that, to transcend that way of thinking, is to renew our mind. You need to renew your thinking. Let's read this uh, scripture in Romans chapter 12. I will probably go to it again next week. Therefore, I exhort you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, alive, holy. That is very different from the old sacrifices in the Old Testament. Sacrifice, by definition, means something, somebody has to die. But the instruction now in the New Testament is to offer your body as a sacrifice, but it's alive. It's a living sacrifice, which is pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. There it is again, reason. Meaning, you've started to think about this, but it brings you to a different conclusion. And then it says, do not be conformed to this present world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what we're going to look at in the next few weeks. The renewing. We all need renewing. Guess what? As long as you are in God's earth, here, in this flesh, there is no stopping to renewing. I pray that when you come here, you have the intention of your minds being renewed. Not just so you can say you attended service or, or, or whatever. I don't know where you're at right now. But have that intention. I, I, want, I want to elevate the way I think. I want to align my thinking to what God is saying because then what I'm saying will be changed. Last scripture here. Let's read that whole, what, the, the, what we started with, we will end with. In verse 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down arguments or imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against something that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You can look at it two ways. It can be your, the way you think, and the way you believe who God is. That's your knowledge of God. As far as I know, that person is this. So your experience, practical experience of who God is. So if, if a thought or a situation is exalting itself higher than who you believe God is. Like for example, some people would say, not in this church, right? Some people would say, oh, that sickness is actually... God sent to you so you can learn something. Right? But we don't see that in Scripture. We don't see that in the very person of Jesus Christ. So it's highly likely, and this is our, our conviction, that that is a thought that is exalting itself higher than who we know about God, who God is. So we cast it down. Does it mean we know everything? No, there's still some things that remain mysteries. Otherwise, we'll be like, you know, omniscient as God. But it could also mean the knowledge of God is what actually God knows. It's trying to be higher than what God knows. And no, no one knows more than God. But the next line is interesting. Because sometimes we stumble with this. 
bringing every thought into captivity. You imprison that thought. You put it in lockdown. You quarantine that thinking. You set it aside. And says, you bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And here's what I'll share with you. There is absolutely nothing wrong if your heart is to obey Christ. That's great. We want to be obedient to Christ. But there's another way to read that as well, which I believe uh, preempts our obedience. The obedience of Christ, because you can say to the obedience to Christ, that's true. But rethinking and reprocessing and going back to the obedience of Christ. Translation, how Christ obeyed. Because outside of Christ's obedience, our obedience falls short. If we think about how He obeyed, that will strengthen you to obey. Because your obedience is hid under His greater obedience to the Father. His obedience gave way for all of us to obey through Him. Not just by His, by his side. Not just with Him, but through Him. And that is centered between what happened in the cross and what happened in the empty tomb. Now, what happened in the cross is surrender, but what happened in the empty tomb is victory. Your victories access, the way you access victory is through surrender. This is renewal. Because the translation of the world, if you surrender, that's your end. No, 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 that's your beginning. For the world, the, the tomb is their end. No, that's just a door open for me to get out of. Open heaven. Victory. Amen? Amen. Who among you are glad that you're here? Who among you received something today? Hallelujah. God is good. Why don't you stand up with me? And let's just pray. I just want your agreement at this moment because there might be somebody somewhere, maybe one person, maybe two, maybe a group of people, maybe a family listening here online or in this very space that we, we are in right now. I don't know what war has been, is being waged in your present situation. Maybe it has gone outside the confines of your thoughts and it's actually being manifested in some way in the physical. But the day of your freedom is today. But it begins with the surrender. The surrender to what Christ has already done for you. It is surrendering to, the, surrendering to the fact that He died for you. That He shed His blood for payment for our sin. And that He was buried. But He didn't stay buried. He is alive. If you believe those, the Bible says, you can become what you believe. So if you want to surrender today, not just to escape your situation, and not just to gain access to heaven, but even possibly you being the access of heaven right here on earth. Pray this with me. Jesus, I thank you for salvation. Jesus, I thank you for salvation. I thank you, Lord, that victory is sure in you. I thank you, Lord, that victory is sure in you. Now today, now today, with all gladness, with all gladness, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I give my all to you. I give my all to you. And your all I receive. And your all I receive. Your life. Your life. Your victory. Your victory. Your everything. Your everything. This new life I have. This new life I have. Because of you. Because of you. Jesus. Jesus. Today I declare. Today I declare. You are my Lord and Savior. You are my Lord and Savior. 
And I give you praise. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise right now.